Welcome back. So we're going to go ahead and start on the electrical components for this one. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we got our resistor and our button here. So placement is kind of up to you. If you want to get fancy, maybe you can find it at the balance point, which for me is actually where that tape is. So you can put the button there and then the uh, resistor just below that. I have the button on here at the kind of like balance point. Uh, it's not glued or anything. I think I will glue it though. Uh, you can use like a hot glue gun or just crazy glue, regular, anything just to kind of keep it in place, even just temporarily. Like, honestly, I could probably just put, you probably just put some uh, electrical tape over it to kind of hold it in place for now, which I actually might do. Yeah, then once you have that in place, uh, you'll also put a resistor. So what I did last time is just wrapped it around. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, get these in place, and then I'll show you guys what I did. So I can see the buttons in place. I used super glue and I just had to use electrical tape to kind of just hold it there while it dried because it was still sliding around a bit. And then for this, I wrapped it around. So one end wraps around and goes straight back to the short lead. And then the other end, you know, wraps around and comes out this way. And then I use my needle nose pliers to bend that last bit in place because it's going to connect to this bottom one here. And you can definitely use electrical tape to hold this in place because you do not want these touching down the line. You don't want them shorting out. So electrical tape, uh, but I'm, of course, I am going to use shrink wrap. Yeah, so I'm going to get that in place, get that shrink wrap in place, and uh, then we're going to start soldering. All right, so I got the resistor in place. Uh, this little contraption is called a helping hand, I think. Uh, that I'm using. And funny enough, I've had this for like years. I saw this at like at a swap meet when I was a little kid and got it because I thought it looked cool. And it turns out it's handy for soldering. Uh, but yeah, you should usually be able to pick these up for like 15 bucks or just come across them at a swap meet. I use the electrical tape for right now. Uh, you can use it as a permanent solution as well, but I'm using it for now just to hold it in place and still allow me to move it so I can make my soldering joints. So we're going to connect this. I have my soldering iron heated up. So you can use a 30 watt for this, I believe. Like I said, I'm no expert. I've been doing this for like a couple of weeks. So um, I'm fairly certain the only thing I saw was about LEDs and high heat, but I think these resistors are a little more uh, durable. So so from what I understand, the trick, the trick to doing this is heating up the wire. Yes, heating up the wire and then connecting the solder to that. Or I guess wires and yeah this is this tip that came with this I also bought a needle nose but this this does well enough all right so that's soldered on it's probably a little sloppier than I'd like flip this around and now we'll cut we'll have to cut the other wire and we'll do the same All right, so I cut and stripped the other wire, and then you can kind of see the resistor popping out here as well. So yeah, electrical tape is your friend. Whether you're using it as a permanent solution or just temporary holding, it is very handy. So we're gonna solder these pieces together now. And this is our negative wire connecting to our resistor that connects to our switch. All right, and we got our soldering connection. Uh, soldering's a little sloppy. <laughs> My soldering's a little sloppy, but uh, it looks like it should hold. All right, so now that I have my two soldering points in place, the negative going to this side of the resistor and the other resistor going to this side of the battery, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use some heat shrink. But like I said, you can use electrical tape. It's fine. You just wanna make sure that these two ends don't touch and then you're good. And for that, what I'm using is, I believe, three eighths of an inch, and then slide it right over there, then I'm gonna heat shrink that. I guess I could probably went a little longer to cover some of those soldering points, but uh, I'll just cover it with electrical tape after. Now, actually what I can do is 
put our wire around through there too. Uh, if I want it. Yeah, so we can put that in place and that will hold our wire out and secure our resistor. All right, it's looking pretty solid. We got our resistor in place. We got our button holding on. So the next thing to do is connect another wire from this top lead all the way down to the end to our LED. So we'll measure out how much we need. So we'll need it from there to the end and we'll give us we'll give ourselves a little breathing room for that all right and then once again i'm just gonna mark it so i know that this is the negative end or like i said you can use actually black wire just as long as you know you don't even have to label it at all then of course we're gonna strip both ends again and we'll use our handy dandy electrical tape. Yeah, so that's gonna go on this top half there. And then I'm just gonna put a little more electrical tape higher up. Kind of just to hold everything in place. So I don't got these wires flying around everywhere. All right, so we got our wires in place and our soldering's all heated up and cleaned. So we're gonna make this connection. Here we go. All right, that's a pretty nice connection, at least as far as the ones I've done today. All right, so that's all set. Our next step here is to set up the LED. And of course, it's not gonna hurt to breadboard it again. We just need to make sure we have the right color LED. They're all clear, so you can't really tell what they are just by looking at them. Uh, it's not working. Oh, because I have to hold down the button on this wand and then this button. Yep, there we go, so that's my UV light. So that was my one I'm keeping in that breadboard, but let's test the one I'm actually gonna use. So that's this one here. So long, the long side is the positive and the short side is the negative. Yep, that's my UV light. All right, so we're good there. All right, so we know our battery still works and we have the correct light. So now the next thing to do is to connect it. Yeah, so if you just connect it like this, you know, it's gonna be offset. So what we're gonna have to do is actually bend these wires so I was a little reluctant to do it at first because I was afraid it might break, but these are pretty durable. So uh, what we need to do is first bend it out because you can see here, it's about the same width as the end of this chopstick. So we basically got to bend it out to its own width and then bend it down. So let's give that a shot. All right, so we have our LED here. And of course, we're going to want to mark the positive and negative side so you don't forget, especially since we're going to be bending it out strangely. So mark the black on the short side, or however you mark it, however you remember. All right, so we got a bent straight out, as you can see. Uh, it's a little crooked. We can fix that. There we go. Now that's straight up. And then we're going to want to bend it down uh, at the size of the chopstick, which, like I said, is the same width of this light bulb. So just basically at the edge of this light is where we want to bend it down. So we'll do that. And then I'm just cleaning up a bit. All right, there we go. So now we have our LED. I didn't break off any of the ends, and this is my negative side here. And I guess you can kind of tell, still tell that it's shorter. All right, so I got it all into place, you know, with the magical electrical tape. I'm holding the LED in place. Um, I cut and stripped the wires to the right length on both sides. And I know this is my short side, the negative side, and my negative side wire that goes to the button. And I have this. A copper clip here uh, to kind of help with the heat. I probably don't need it because these are kind of long enough, but I just want to do it in case because you know you don't want to mess it up this far along a project. Even though 
you can easily swap out for another LED if you do mess it up, but it will help. Uh, I have a variable temperature soldering iron. So right now I have it at a five. I have it like on two or a little above two. So it's at pretty low temperature now just to solder these. So this is the negative side. We're going to go ahead and solder these right now. And there we go. A pretty solid connection. I think I'm getting a little better at this. <laughs> So we'll come back after I do the other side and I'll show you uh, what it looks like completed. All right, so both sides are done now. I had a little trouble with the other side because the wires weren't quite lining up right. So I just had to use some pliers and uh, probably needed to clean the tip of the soldering iron a little better. All right, so we're connected. Batteries in, buttons in place, resistor. So let's see if it still works. And it still works. So yeah, we're done with the first part. As you can see, here's our old one, first one. I definitely like this is a way more solid uh, for the base. Uh, I probably could have got the same thing if I just used a little more electrical tape. But yeah, this is a very flimsy. Uh, the other parts don't matter so much. I did like that I glued the button ahead of time. Uh, I don't think this moves because it's connected on both sides. but. Yeah, so these are pretty much the same except for uh, the heat shrink. And I was a little worried about overheating the battery because, yeah, those heat guns do provide a lot of heat. But I cooled it down and it seems to be working fine. So we'll end this there. Uh, I'm going to clean it up a little bit more. But, yeah, that's the uh, version 2 of the LED wand.